looked at me funny. <laughs> that guy's got dust coming from his truck. I don't know if he knows how dusty the truck is. Reposition time. That was dusty. That truck was dusty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's worse than the COVID dust. That's what I'm saying. Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Line Bodybuilding, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about pre-exhaustion. And I have talked to you about pre-exhaustion before, but I just wanted to share with you like something that I'm doing right now. First of all, one of the ways that you can pre-exhaust the muscle, so basically what you're trying to do is make sure a certain muscle group is hitting absolute failure. So say you normally do bench presses and you notice that your delts are hitting failure first or your triceps and you want your chest to hit failure, a standard technique that is done by many people and has been done for decades is to perform an isolation exercise first, such as dumbbell flies, and then immediately go into that bench press exercise to make sure that chest is hitting failure. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this. One is to do straight sets of chest dumbbell flies first, and then go into your compound exercise of bench presses for three or four sets or five sets or whatever it is you wanna do. But basically you do straight sets of an isolation exercise. And the other way to do it is to immediately pre-exhaust, such as you do the isolation exercise first, and then with no rest whatsoever, you go immediately into the compound lift to make sure that major muscle group is hitting exhaustion. Now, both ways work, but there is a third way that I've been messing around with lately, which works great as well, which is pre-exhaustion through range of motion. And this ties into the last video I made when it comes down to micro reps. So for instance, with bicep curls, let's just use that as an example. With bicep curls, when I do super short ranges of motion like this, I'm making sure that I hit the biceps brachii the way I want. I'm really feeling like this muscle here is exhausting and not the brachialis or the, or the forearm muscles, right? So because of this, I may hit absolute exhaustion this way and then immediately after I hit absolute exhaustion, then I will go into the full rep and push that bicep deeper into failure. And therefore I get more of an overall bicep pump. So basically I make sure that the bicep brachii is hitting absolute failure because I'm pre-exhausting it and then including it in the full exercise. And this may be great for you guys out there who are totally nervous that, oh yeah, I did partials and then I've somehow become so inflexible and, and then, you know, I'm going to injure myself and stuff because, you know, there's all this fear mongering on the internet saying that if you do partial ranges, then you're, you're messing yourself up for life or whatever, which is absolute BS. But the bottom line is, is that if you're one of these people that is afraid of doing partial reps at all, this could be a way that you incorporate that technique and then go into the full rep or whatever rep you want. And therefore you're making sure that that particular muscle group that is a weak link for you is hitting absolute failure. Now, a way to do this with squats, for instance, is to do a partial range of motion for the first 20 or 30 reps, hit really close to exhaustion in a few of the leg muscles, such as the medialis or maybe the quadricep or whatever, and then start doing some deep squats for the last few reps to make sure that you're still maintaining flexibility, depending on what the perfect range of motion is for you with that, uh, that type of movement, right? So I'm not saying for everybody to do ass to the grass squats because that's definitely not the right thing for a lot of people, but say, uh, you notice that at different depths of squatting, you hit different muscle groups and at the shallower depths, you're hitting some of them that you want to really concentrate on, such as the medialis, or maybe you notice that you're hitting the quadricep better with the top range of the motion and maybe not necessarily with the bottom because the bottom, you might be hitting a little bit more of the hamstring. You know what I'm saying? So you may want to hit a range of motion where you hit the muscle you want, exhaust that range of motion as much as possible, and then do those extra stretch reps at the end of the set and therefore you start to bring in those other muscle groups and make sure that you're maintaining flexibility. So this could be a great way for you to incorporate partial range and full range of motion and at the same time use the principle of pre-exhaustion strategically for the muscles that you feel are weak for you or are not necessarily getting hit when you're doing your full range of motion all the time or you're doing a standard compound exercise. So these are some secret top tips. And this is totally off topic, but in this clip right here, that's not my bike. All right, it's not my bike. It's somebody else's bike. Although I like this bike, it's a very nice bike. The color is very pretty. So I hope this helps you out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get hold of me, just go to naturalandbodybuilding.com and thanks to the Patreon supporters and take care for now. Mountain. Oh, here's an exercise stick. And I just stepped into some big horse shit. <laughs>